So the traffic you're getting from social media is not what social media is for. Unless you're running a lot of ads, and obviously you do want to drive some traffic to social media, but it's much more of a brand awareness play. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Marketing Interruption, a daily podcast powered by Blue Tusker that interrupts your day with marketing news, tips and strategies from an entrepreneur who lives and breathes marketing. Now, let the interruption begin with your host, Andrew Ma. Hello and welcome to episode number 14 of Marketing Interruption. My name is Andrew Maftone. I will be your host. And today we are talking about the most important KPIs that you should and shouldn't be paying attention to. And I love this episode. The reason I'm going to love this episode so much is because it's going to stir up some shit. And I love, I love causing, I love seeing marketers fight in the comments. <laughs> so I did, uh, I made a list of five that you should be following that to me seem obvious and then five that you shouldn't be. And I'm going to give you some insight on, on why I think all this is. And one of the th- one of my, my, uh, my things I've always said, I think I've said it several times in this podcast in the short time I've been doing it, that the most important KPI next to conversion is email. How big, and obviously you're going to want to, uh, there, again, there's going to be things in here that are dependent. And there's going to be things on like, oh yeah, well, I don't care how big your email list is if no one responds to an email. But I'm going to say, your ability to create emails, so the size of your list. Uh, it's very um, it's very relevant to uh, a phallic response, <laughs> in which case it's not the size of your list, but it's how you use it. Um, and if you don't use it, you lose it. And uh, wow, there was another one. There's another one that my buddy told me. It was hilarious. Like, that is disgusting. Um, but essentially that you need you need to know how to use it too um but moving on email list size your email list is very very important um it is dependent on how you use it and how engaged everyone is yes but your ability to grow emails is the second most important thing outside of an actual conversion um the second one i was going to do conversion rate that one's pretty obvious uh again i think all these ones that that are general are are obvious but to me these are like the ones where i go okay if i had a dashboard on a tv up in the office somewhere and i want to know what's going on these are like the top five where i go where are we at with this and the reason i say conversion rate is because it can tell you a lot if your conversion rate is consistently you know at a certain number and then the next day it tanks one of two things can happen. Your website may have gone down. You could have gotten a butt ton of traffic from something that you don't even know. There's so many things that can cause a conversion rate to fluctuate that if you see a conversion rate fluctuation, you immediately know something has changed. What has changed? And obviously, the better the conversion rate, the better you're doing, but you want to know what has changed, even if it went up. So if you walk in one day and you look at your board and you go, wow, my conversion rate is double what it was yesterday. That to me even though it's a good thing, could be a red flag because it could also mean that some of the traffic you were driving before that normally wasn't converting as well, maybe that traffic's just not being driven right now. So now you need to go look at your lead flow account or what your sales are at for that day or something like that. So it, it can still show you a lot about what's going on. Um, lifetime value. This one is very important and I'm shocked at how many people don't have an answer for this when I talk to them. Um, I, it's the next one, actually, I'll, I'll jump ahead a minute here is, is your, uh, your CPA. So your cost per acquisition. And if you are spending X to bring in a customer and that customer's, you know, first, uh, order with you or their first thing that they buy from you is Y, then all of a sudden you can go, great. I made X on this, on this sale. But a lot of times what so many companies don't think about is the lifetime value because if that customer, if it cost you $5 to get a customer to spend $10, that's awesome. So you got uh, $2 for every dollar that you spent. But if that customer on average shops with you or you know stays with you for several contracts or whatever the business is that you have for a longer time, then who gives a shit if it costs you $5? If it costs you $10, it may cost you $20 to convert for a $10 order. But if that person consistently orders with you for so long, then that's much more important. So your average order value is interesting, but I really want to know what the lifetime value of the customer is because that's going to tell me 
on average, I'm going to make X on this person if I spend X. It's basically Amazon's whole thing is why they spend so much money acquiring customers and putting out so much content and are okay with charging significantly less because they know they're going to keep that customer and that they're going to spend X or Y over there. i got to stop doing alphabet shit with this. But they're going to keep spending so much over a certain period of time. Uh, and then the next one. CTR, so your click-through rate. And the reason I picked this one is kind of, it's basically your conversion rate for your paid advertising, right? And the reason I chose this is it, it does tell you a lot about your impressions versus your clicks. It tells you if the content and or your copy is good enough. And it will also kind of give you some insight into a lot of other things. So as I mentioned, conversion rate can tell you like what's working, what's not. And if your click-through rate is fluctuating, it can tell you that something really good is happening or something really bad is happening. Even if the click-through rate has improved, it doesn't always mean that the the solution, or I'm sorry, the cause was, was actually positive. Um, so I always keep an eye on click-through rate. And so now I'm gonna go into the five things that I personally never really give a shit about. And one of the first ones is my favorite, so reach or impressions. So here's the deal. I uh, have only, I, we, we don't work with very, very large companies often. I'm not, I'm not the marketing agency for Coke. I wish I was. Uh, Pepsi won't take me either. But your reach and impressions mean nothing to me if there's nothing else tied to it. It is the most BS vanity, vanity metric that I've had so many marketers say like, yeah, but we reached 2.4 billion people in the past month ago but great, I don't care. Did how many of those actually bought? Like, it means nothing to me. I know brand awareness is very, very important. And brand awareness is definitely something that needs to be focused on. And I'm always interested in what, how many people we did reach, but I'm never adjusting my copy or my creative or anything like that to try to reach more people just to hone in on that one metric. Basically, I use that metric as a, great, we reached a lot of people and we brought some brand awareness but I'm currently more and more focused on how's my conversion doing, how's all that other stuff. Uh, the next one, social media followers, don't care, great. You have 5,000 million followers, which isn't even a number, but it's a thing. And you have uh, 400 million people following you on Instagram. And when I make a post, four people like it, bite me. I don't care how many followers you have. It means nothing. Your engagement rate's a different story because that will tell me your followers versus how many people actually care, but I don't care about how many social media followers you have. And that stands for businesses and brands too, not just obnoxious influencers. Um, this one's interesting. Gross revenue. Don't really care uh, only because uh, it's a vanity metric. Like, great, we did uh, $1.2 million this month. It was our biggest month ever. Awesome. How much did we spend? Uh, 1.4. Well, that's crap. Like who, <laughs> I don't care. And then, oh, it's uh, e-commerce. Oh, we did $500,000 this month. Awesome. But how many of those did we give a 60% discount coupon to be like all of them? Great. That means nothing to me. And we lost money. So the, the gross revenue is interesting. It's a definitely a vanity metric. I like using it uh, to more kind of help with company culture, just because to me, it's a little bit easier to kind of understand like, Hey, we hit this new milestone of this much money. And as long as our profitability kind of remains, then great. So gross revenue is interesting, but I always like to know not necessarily bottom line, but somewhere in, in bottom line and you can't live off bottom line, which by the way, will probably be another podcast. I'll do uh, CPM your cost per viewing thousand people. I don't care. Uh, great. Awesome. Obviously, CPMs are all up and down right now because of, or at least on Facebook ads, because of everyone kind of leaving Facebook for a little while there. Um, but it, it doesn't mean much to me. It is something I look at. Uh, all of these, I definitely look at them. I don't ignore them. But they're not something that I make rash decisions on. CPM is kind of telling me more where where the that platform that I'm using is or where the industry is and less about my ads unless I look at one specific ad and it's got a great relevancy score and it's showing significantly more, it's a different story, but I usually don't care that much about CPM. And last but not least, uh, website traffic from social media. So th <laughs> this one's interesting. And the reason this one's odd is because it kind of counter, it's counteractive to my first one I did, which was impressions and reach. So the traffic you're getting from social media is not what social media is for. Unless you're running a lot of ads and obviously you do want to drive some traffic to social media, but it's much more of a brand awareness play. So if you're doing, if you're able to reach several million people on Facebook, but none of them are clicking over, 
I would still tell you, yes, you need to continue to do that and build brand awareness. Maybe I won't put as much like capital behind it, or maybe I won't put as much work behind it, but I don't care how much people are driving to my website because a lot of people, they'll see you on Facebook, but then they'll go Google you later and then they're coming from Google and you go, great, I should spend more money on Google, but it doesn't work that way. So a lot of these people are going to disagree with. So feel free to email me at marketing automation, marketing, I keep doing that, marketing interruption at bluetusker.com. Tell me whether you agree, disagree, or if you have any questions that you want me to go over this week, next week, or any other week. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for joining us for today's marketing interruption. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And don't forget to email marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com with any marketing questions you'd like to have answered on the show. And head over to marketinginterruption.bluetusker.com to catch up on past episodes. Until next time. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.